Oh, welcome back to the Factorio Wave Defense Speedrun World Record Base Design. Uh, maybe it's still the world record when you're watching this, maybe not. Uh, we recently put up a rocket in 49 minutes and 1 second to take the world record in the speedrun category from Anti Elites, who had previously launched a rocket in 49 minutes 27 seconds. And today I wanted to do a bit of a base tour and talk about the base and not so much the run but kind of the differences between this base and the previous base design that Anti-Elites uses. Um, and so we've, yeah, we've kind of edited moded a lot of the stuff back in to, to kind of replicate quote normal function. Uh, turned out we also needed some power grid to have all these things running at once because they're usually not in the course of a regular speed run. And yeah, there's a bunch of things that did a different in small like runner preference ways and then a couple of things that are like structurally different in ways that might be interesting like i think the first of these is the the low density structure build of which i do only 17 which is a kind of weird number and i do it immediately after petrochem at the same time as plastic uh, in this kind of weird copy paste thing that makes this bit like a little easier but overall i don't think necessarily think that this that the early LDS is itself faster and um, the world the previous world record build uses I think 40 and it does it after the rocket control unit so there's a completely different sequence of which rocket component it happens first this build is because it's smaller it's also simpler like we only need to get one belt of copper in which makes this buffer situation a whole lot easier in fact it's copied from the very first iron buffer that we make we use that iron buffer for the other iron buffer and then also the copper buffer um, it also means that this belt of plastic coming out can be a whole lot simpler because we've got low density structure taking copper off the belt well cop taking plastic off the belt uh, before other chem plants put plastic back on the belt so the total amount of plastic going through this thing is somewhat more than one belt but we can kind of yeah optimize slash cheat this little thing okay and then we do we do end up having to make another plastic buffer over here to keep this up for rigid reasons uh, but this is quite a nice way of making this a fairly concise build um, and then also because it's relatively smaller it kind of turns on and gets up to full speed faster than the previous build um yeah i don't think that i think the yeah the main thing is it makes the these buffers are faster to set up i think and also the the coils for red chips which we're going to talk about later um i can do here because they can come out of this buffer whereas a lot of other wave defense setups and what i was doing before this wander all the way over to the other side of the base and make coils for red chips in a way that's like kind of like i don't have to come over this far at all i can when i'm building this we step to about here to do to unload these green chips and then we just head back over to the mall to pick up more stuff to this buffer to turn it around to build the coils here and that's all kind of in the line of hey we just built the plastic the next thing we're going to do is build all this stuff and then go over and build modules uh, modules we'll talk about later yeah other other small things that are not a huge deal but are probably worth mentioning is I think the world record with its hot bars uses four yeah it uses four hot bars with every possible item that everyone ever might want to build visible at the same time whereas I've got yeah two general hot bars a power grid hot bar um, an iron mall hot bar including stuff for hand feeding to the engines um, an oil yeah petrochem hot bar a hospitality hot bar um, wave defense lets you set these up ahead of time so so i've got a bunch of different hot bars with some repetition of items between each that allow, allows me to press fewer buttons overall and then use different hot bars contextually which i like because it means i have to press few, fewer buttons and um, we're also getting a bit of value from putting specifically copper and sometimes iron in the trash slots uh, which means yeah we're just grabbing a bunch of copper early on um, stashing it in the trash slots so these are available because wave defense unlocks all of the technology and this means that we when we are building the low density structure we're in a better place to hand feed a bunch of the stuff and kick it off immediately and get it running faster which i like um, i also build a lot more from the car and also from the map kind of deliberately like when we are this is the second belt of iron to get built here. We stamp out 
um, yeah, I probably still have the blueprint over here somewhere, we stamp out a bunch of the furnaces and then bounce to the map to do specifically these steel furnaces and then also the stone which is currently here that's that's the thing to talk about next and then drive around and build them in a car which is nice and fast um, I don't think the the 49 minute 27 run uses the car that much and then this belt also happens with the car the power grid we build really early we build the entire power grid before fully mining the copper which is kind of weird but it means we don't have to go back which is nice and then because we also drop this belt in with a car we build the petrochem we do a little buffer uh, we connect this belt uh, to the belt that we put here previously we kind of have to guess where this belt starts which is a bit of a shame uh, but it means that that entire power grid piece of work is done and we can move on which is nice um, and then yeah let's I guess talk about the stone we built right over the top of the stone here wave defense is kind of weird in that what we want to do is launch a rocket and it turns out that like we don't have to do any science to unlock this we don't have to do purple science which uses a lot of stone we don't need any military science which means after this smelting block is down and after the power grid is down we basically don't need any more stone and so so now i think one of the strats is find a copper patch or find a stone patch that you're going to build over because when you have like this is when you when you get to hey i'm at the second and third copper lane extension i need furnaces to build this you are literally right next to where the furnaces are so you don't have to path to somewhere else on the map to go and get the stone it's all just like the furnaces are just right there which is nice and super fast um yeah, and then I guess let's also, the other thing that's a bit weird is this thing here, which I think I can probably do two of. Uh, where would the second one, the, figure out where the second one in this case would be kind of awkward. Uh, because they, yeah, this is, these two will be a method of sneaking in more than three belts of copper, which is why the placement is awkward, because they have to be specifically before the merge. This one here is before the merge, because it's kind of before this side loading here. We want to be able to get three full belts of copper out, and then more copper still with these two inserters. Um, so here it doesn't work, because it takes copper away from an existing line. Uh, we want copper that will yeah, but then the merge will be able to accommodate and end up with more copper. Um, although that depends on the number of miners we have. 85, yeah, if 85, I mean, are they all running? Maybe, maybe not. Um, we need 80 miners to make the first of these useful, and then 85 miners to make the second of these useful because of the increased grab speed. Uh, but then, yeah, this, this spaghetti thing in here um, also leads to a reduction in iron, so it's not quite as easy as just pipe the copper in and get more uh, we've got to manage the more being cut uh, because otherwise we don't get the iron in to do the extensions but this this whole thing here leads to 3.2 belts of iron with one red inserter uh, which is yeah an overall increase over the three belts of copper that wave defense runs until this point had previously been doing which is nice um, and then yeah the other the other slight pathing difference like this is this is a very normal looking iron maps iron patch setup um for things that i've been doing for ages and also things that the board record and other players other runners have been doing for ages but we build this kind of differently like these are all the miners to go down first before we even have any copper and then like when we drop these down right at the beginning we don't even have that many miners we have to come back put more miners down but that means that when we go and get the points from killing nests because that's how wave defense works we don't have to revisit the iron to put more mining drills on it after having pushed um, we have to come back to get the steel which is you know pretty normal that's a thing that happens a variety of times anyway um, but it's another one of the other nice things that reduces the number of times we have to go to any particular place so stone where we're going to build over means we don't have to revisit that all the time um, dropping down all of the iron miners before mining productivity and then not having to go back um, doing all of the power grid at once and not having to go back um, yeah reduction in pathing seems pretty nice and then I think the other 
the other major difference between this current plan and the prior plan of 49 minutes 27 seconds is the way we put this Missy Elliott Bernie Sanders modules built together so it all comes from a, a piece like this which we build first uh, which we then flip and then several times reverse um, so that the output belt goes through the middle with the idea that this will overall like reduce the amount of belt delay uh, because like so these these assemblers if we like if we had if we had the output belt either on one side of the red chips build or the other then some collection of assemblers would have to have their modules traverse the entire length of the build uh, before they got to the output belt to get into the, these other sections whereas this way around i mean yeah it's it's kind of i'm still not entirely sure what the best way is have these all blocked why are these all blocked yeah sure whatever bases that are not designed to run for this long um yeah the it's i'm still finding it tricky to assess exactly how much this reduced belt delay is worth because it also only really like having these if we had the the output belt on the far side which is what i used to do then all of these assemblers are having are experiencing the same belt delay regardless of whether they're going in which direction over this section of belt belt but these roughly 50 percent of them experience increased belt delay so this this is way where it gets the bernie sanders name for this modules build is that that i suspect that this re reduces the belt delay by like 60 percent but only for something like 50 percent of modules i'm not sure how much it's worth i'm still doing it uh maybe my opinion is worth something because i currently have the world record maybe i'm wrong who knows the other big difference is likely to be yeah we have 18 through here it turns out that through all of this we have 58 assemblers on red chips and the prior world record from anti had 52 so that's also that's also the reason why we need all 10 of these coils assemblers and they're all busy and i think i actually need i think we actually need to upgrade the last inserter in each because there's still a couple of gaps here because we've got these double slow inserters whereas i think if we give these fast inserters uh, that's going to be annoying to build. We'll have to figure out how that wants to happen. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the other the other big difference. We straight up have like 10% more red chip production. Um, other small differences are, yeah, we also have fewer... Well, no, other way around. We have more assemblers making blue chips. Um, this assembler here is kind of special because this is one that we take out this inserter and pivot to speed module 2s. And then, yeah, we have some other inserters on here, it's fine. And then the prod mods that were inside this assembler count towards the modules that we are counting to figure out how many prod mod 3s we need. So, so having an extra assembler on blue chips first of all if we have all the ingredients that's nice um, helps it go a little bit faster this is also beacon harder we've got i think this is more beacons than the previous plan had and then it also doesn't cost us any more modules because we're pivoting this assembler actually we need to speed module this as well never mind um so yeah so we get more blue chips out more quickly uh, we've also got a plan at the end to count yeah this is we are vastly over producing blue chips more than we can process with the rcu plan um, and that's because we expect to make all the blue chips we need and then convert these all to speed modules to pop out the prod mods because we don't care about prod mods at at that point like these guys are running the whole time and these are these ones we can use for say the last couple of us use maybe a cycle or two of us use each which is still another 12 or 15 us use which goes pretty quickly because they're also still beaconed crafting speed 2.25 uh, but yeah that's an and then we can just manage where like the yeah manage the distribution and internal buffers of speed modules and blue chips and also means that this is one of the manners in which i'm hoping is good for 
managing the total copper allocation in that we often run out of green chips. I mean, we don't at the moment because we have infinity chests at some of these, so the base continues to look like what it's looking like when it's running. Uh, but we will often run out of green chips, and if we've made all the blue chips, we don't care that we've run out of green chips because the modules will kind of get by and that's fine. And I think, yeah, I think that's one of the ways that I'm hoping that we can manage the industrial constraint of how much copy you are, are you collecting, how much of it turns into RCUs, how much of it turns into LDS, all of that kind of stuff by cutting blue chips, which are the expensive thing, and then very carefully managing the internal buffers. And hopefully that lets us, well, I mean, we already got the world record. I will, I will claim that this achieved its plan. And yeah, sure. Why? Why not? Um, is there anything else I wanted to mention? I think that's I think the last thing that that I want to mention is yeah there's 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 a bit of tactical red belt in here because the number of assemblers we need uh, like it draws more than half a yellow belt of green chips so we need some red belt in here to get enough green chips in the previous world record also does this we are also using red belt purely for belt delay purposes and this is I don't think the previous world record of 49 minutes 27 seconds does this and i think it's it's just free time which we could have and so we've got red belt there we've got red belt that gets the speed modules into the rcus we've got red belt to help the rotation i mean sometimes i mean it might even be viable to put red belt on here i don't know if the inserters are going to grab from the fast moving belt but move like quickly moving all the ingredients between the assemblers that want them like it's pretty common for these last couple of assemblers on this loop to be idle because these earlier assemblers are filling up their internal buffers of speed modules. I guess that means I could beacon less. I don't want to beacon less. Um, and then also red belt to the silo is also not a thing I think the pre prior world record necessarily does, but it's also just like a great use of time. I think I think the prior world record puts the RCUs also on the same belt as the low density structure and or rocket fuel, which is a nice trick for running down and grabbing it all later. Um, yeah, one of one of the downsides of this plan is if RCUs are done, but either low density structure or rocket fuel isn't, uh, we run down here, we grab all of the RCUs. If we need the other components, we've kind of got to battle our way through here, uh, maybe pull up some of these things to get from one point to the other to find the last couple of rocket fuels or even low density structure might be somewhere on this belt. Like, if the RCUs aren't the last component we're waiting on, this this is a bit of an issue. Um, but most, I mean, the plan is that they are, but, oh well, never mind. Um, so yeah, so I think that's most of what we wanted to talk about. This is like the old base versus the new base. Um, I don't think anyone else has taken this base and done anything with it yet. So maybe this gets even more changes as someone other than me pokes it around and, and like makes it go even faster. Um, but yeah, it will, launch, it will launch rockets. It will launch rockets with some kind of pace. Uh, we went we went to space in the space. It did the things that it needed to. Uh, maybe it will do the things that it needs to for someone else as well. Who knows? Th times are good.